what's up divas and what's up divos it's your girl april so you already know what time it is it is real talk wednesday so of course it is time to dish out the advice dish out the gossip dish out the goods you know chop it up chat it up whatever you want to call it that's what we're gonna do so in case you guys are wondering about the hair that i'm actually wearing today this is a few months old this is from grace length hair from ally express and i did do a video on it it is all loose wave it is super long it's probably about 24 inches and i absolutely love this hair um it is a pre-tweezed middle part um, but I really do like the hair. It is beautiful hair. They're very affordable in Ally Express. I will be uploading my favorites Ally Express vendor video within the next few days um, because I did promise to make that. So I actually went ahead and made it. And they are, they are part of it as well. This vendor is part of it as well. So, yes, yeah, so let's get into the real talk. Um, and if you need a real talk video about your self life situation, need advice, you can always email me at muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Please put in the subject line real talk. And if you want to change the names of your characters or yourself, so who's ever in the email, you want to change the name, go ahead and do so and just let me know. That way, I don't have to think too hard for names, even though it shouldn't be that hard, but I could be having a lot going on, y'all. Like, seriously, I don't even have a drink today. My, my drink cup is, like, empty. I don't have any booze. I don't have any vodka, no liquor, no nothing. So... <laughs> Yeah, I got some. I have to go to the store today and get some. But anyway, so let's get on to this video. So today, I swear, I'm going to try to get to three. It should not be that hard for me. Okay, so let's get into this. Um... And the names are already changed for me. Hello, Miss April. I always call my elders Miss and Mr. Don't mind that. So I thank you. I thank you so much. <laughs> Even though I'm your elder, but all right. <laughs> my name is Monica, and I'm 20 years old, and I have been dating my 23-year-old 20, boyfriend, Troy, for almost two years. Before I met Troy, I was attracted to your typical built, tall, fit, handsome guys. Troy, Troy on the other hand, is the total opposite. He's a bigger guy, not the type I would usually go for, but I loved his personality, and that's what got me into the relationship. Now to the point of this email, I love my boyfriend Troy, I truly do, but I still have a tendency to feel uncomfortable when we walk together or when we kiss in public. I still slickly look around to see if anyone noticed. He's the best guy I've ever been with, and I don't want to jeopardize our relationship. I just want your advice or help with this or just feelings on the topic in general. Thank you so much, Monica. So Monica is 23 and she has a boyfriend named Troy who has been with her, he's, excuse me, Monica is 20 and Troy is 23. And her and her boyfriend have been together almost two years. Now she was attracted to the typical built guy, handsome, good looking, tall, but Troy is total opposite of that, which she said he's a bigger guy. And she feels some type of way, you know, she feels some type of way when they're in the public. She's probably, she seems like she feels a little ashamed. That's the, that's what I'm getting. And she looks around to make sure no one's looking while they're kissing and holding hands and things like that in public. So what is my take on it? Let me tell you something, um, Monica. First of all, looks are not everything, okay? Let me tell you that much. Looks are not everything. Beauty, like, you know the old saying, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. It's beauty within, okay? So what you're attracted to may not be what other people are attracted to. However, what you're attracted to might be what some other women are attracted to. So you may feel like he's a bigger guy. He's not tall, built, and handsome or whatever. But he's total opposite. But that's what you see. Some women don't like tall, built, and all of that. Some women are not attracted to that. All that muscular, you know, body going on and tall. Some women are not attracted to that. However, there are women out there, Monica, that are attracted to your man. You just don't know, Okay. What you find that might not be too handsome to you or too appealing to you may catch another woman's eyes and may be totally appealing to them. So here's the thing. What makes you feel like he's not good enough to hold hands with in public or you feel some type of way? 
Never judge a book by its cover, for one. He can look the way he looks on the outside and be a total gentleman, a sweetheart, someone that you'd want to spend the rest of your life with because that's his personality and that's the type of person he is. However, he can be one of those tall, built, handsome motherfuckers and be a total asshole, okay? Be a total asshole. Now, mind you, I've dated someone when I first moved up here. Not when I first moved here, but I was here long enough. And he was tall, built, handsome, from Jersey. And he was just an asshole. Like, a total asshole. For real. He was so into himself, so cocky, always looking in the mirror, always taking selfies. First of all, never date a man who takes at least 10 selfies a day on some real flexing. Because that's a, a little bit too much. And it's a total turn off. So never date a man that takes selfies constantly. And wants to post them to his social media. He was a total jerk. So looks are not everything. They can be very deceiving. Now what my thing is this. What might not look good to you. Meaning your friends and your family members or your associates. Who gives a shit if they don't think that Troy is handsome. Or he's not built. Or he's not tall. Who cares what they really think about your man? Who cares what anybody in this world, in this universe, thinks about how your man looks, okay? As long as he's a man and a gentleman, what the hell does it matter? Now, I'd rather have someone who is average looking or just whatever, however he looks, but as long as he is a gentleman and is a sweet person, I wouldn't care less. I have seen some really unattractive men that's unattractive to me. But they were super duper nice people and really a gentleman. So with all of the looks and things, that's just a beauty, a vain, vain. And who's to say that they're even handsome, these tall guys? Their looks can be so distracting sometimes because their attitude is just so ugly. Which makes them on the outside so freaking ugly. I'd rather date someone that is good to me, is respectful to me is a man and a gentleman to me then and just be a person i would not care what they looks like versus somebody who's drop dead handsome and what have you and he's just a total asshole like those are the type that you have to worry about a lot of the times because they know that their looks are appealing to women to some women me personally i don't like all that muscular going on it's just like you know i don't i don't want you to be a bodybuilder i don't really care how you look to be honest because ain't nobody perfect Nobody's perfect. It's we're, we're in our skin temporarily. We're just people. Nobody's perfect. Me, personally, I'm not perfect. My body is not fit. And I would be so upset and hurt if my man didn't want to walk out in public with me and kiss me in public because of my body shape or because my teeth or because of I wear wigs or anything like that. I would be really upset and hurt. So, Monica, you need to think about what you want and what you need okay what you need is a good man that's going to be a gentleman to you who's going to treat you like a lady okay that's what you need but what you want is someone who looks like a number 10 and what might be a number 10 to you might be a number one to a, to a lot of women like a lot of women don't go for all of that you know it's looks sometimes can be so deceitful and just so deceiving because you think that this person is just so great and then when you get to know them they're just sometimes so and I say sometimes they're so into themselves they're so vain they could care less about anybody else's feelings because they know that they have what it takes to get whoever else and their attitudes are like the worst no one can live with that you know what I mean? So stop worrying about what other people are thinking about you out in public. Here's, this is just me. I can give a shit what anybody thinks about my man. I can give a shit about what anybody thinks about me personally, what I have on, what I'm wearing. If you don't like it, oh well, kick rocks. I could care less because at the end of the day, you're not coming home with me. At 
the ends of the minutes at the at this time present time you're not coming home with me you're not coming into my home i could care less you're not the one loving on me you're not the one kissing hugging on me and retreating me like a lady so what i love is what i love i don't care about what anybody else loves you show your affection to your man in public because hey some men don't show affection to women in public all right they really don't and so when he starts lacking that because he's starting to see how you're acting then you're gonna be like damn troy i'm so sorry or damn I miss the, the old Troy. A lot of people, to me, it seemed like they just be caught up so much in this whole beauty shit. And don't get me wrong, I like to put on my makeup, I like to put on my hair, I like to get dressed up, or I like to just to put on some comfortable clothes. I don't really like to get dressed up too much because that's not the type of person I am. I like to wear sneakers, or not even sneakers, but I like to wear flats or flat shoes. I don't really do the heel thing too much because that's just not me anymore. But a lot of people get so caught up in looks and it just be like, you know, hold on. We only hear... For a short period of time. And who's to say your ugly is not somebody else's beautiful? You know what I'm saying? And what you think is a flaw might be something so freaking beautiful to someone else. What you think to you is bigger and built, I would honestly think like, hey, I like a nice size teddy bear. I don't want you to be skin and bones. I don't really even care if you're built because a bitch like me ain't built neither. So I'm not about to judge you for your size. And I'm not about to not hold your hands in public or kiss you in public because I'm afraid that somebody's watching. Everybody needs love. And there's somebody for everybody out there. And Monica, you were attracted to that type of man. Built, handsome, tall, whatever. Well, what happened? Why you ain't with one of them now? Because it seems like you got Troy, and he's not your attraction in the beginning. In the beginning. But I'm pretty sure you're attracted to him somewhat now, because if you weren't, you wouldn't be with him for so long. But, were you ever with those type of men who's attracted, whose attractions were appealing like that to you? Or here's the thing, you might have been with a couple of them, one or two or a couple of them. I'm not sure, I don't know. However, maybe you're, maybe you yourself... To them are not attractive. You know what I mean? Sometimes those men have such high standards on the women that they're with sometimes. Or, you know, they look down upon certain people in their body frame and their size and their appearance. Because they feel like they're on top of the world and this is how they look. And then they're constantly working out or they're constantly in the fucking mirror. And I'm, I don't know about you girls, but I'm just really not into a man who's constantly in the mirror Wanting to make sure he's flexing. And I'm just really not into that. I'm not saying be no rusty, dusty motherfucker neither. However, looks are not everything. And people really need to get off that kick like, oh, I got to look like this. Or I got to look like this. I'm going to go buy me an ass this week. And the next week I'm going to get me some titties. And then the next week after that, I'm going to get my face done. Like, I'm going to do all of this. And what do people do all of this for? They do it for themselves, but a lot of times they do it for the attention and to seek the attention of the opposite sex. And sometimes the same sex, depending on which way they flow, which way they go. So here's my thing to you, Monica. Troy is a good man. If you don't want him, somebody else is going to want him. And somebody else is going to find him oh so attractive. And somebody else is going to find that kissing him in public is nothing wrong with that. And they would be more than happy to find him and take him from you. So get your head out of the... Um, just get your head out of your ass, basically. And start worrying about what these other men look like. Because I'm pretty sure if Troy did that to you and you weren't up to his size standards, you wouldn't like it at all. And then you would be sitting there feeling like, mm. Now, I'm pretty sure Troy does not know. <clears throat> excuse me. I'm pretty sure Troy does not know how you feel. And honestly, I wouldn't advise you to tell him either. But <clears throat> stop being so ashamed of what you have and be happy. Because life is not, tomorrow is not guaranteed for neither one of you, for none of us. So tomorrow is not guaranteed. Stop worrying about what everybody else is thinking about. Oh, what Monica is doing. Oh, who Monica is fucking. Oh, who Monica is kissing the public. And oh, who Monica is with. Stop worrying about them. Because why are you worrying about them? 
they doing them. They not worried about you. They not caring about you. They not thinking about your ass. They busy doing them with a man who might not be the built, tall, handsome guy. But just might be a Troy nigga who they truly appreciate and truly love. See, females get it twisted these days because some of them just don't appreciate shit. You give them an inch, some of them, and they want to take a mile. You know what I mean? You cannot get the entire package all the time. Be happy that you got a good man who respects you and is a man, a good man. Can't have everything you want in life because it doesn't work like that. It really, really does not work like that. Me, personally, I say stop being so selfish or just vain, basically vain, because that's the part of being vain, you know. I don't know, y'all, but how would you feel if that were you? Would you be ashamed to take your man out in public? If you're ashamed to take your man out in public, then why the fuck are you even with him? I mean, I'm just trying to figure that out. You love him, but you love him indoors? Then you really don't give a fuck about him. You really don't care about him like that. If you can honestly feel ashamed and make sure you're looking around before someone ain't looking to see you kissing him. If that's how you feel, then your feelings for him are not genuine. That's just my take on it. So let Monica know what you would do or what you think about this whole scenario. Okay. This one is a doozy and the next one too. Okay. Hi, April. You can call me Liz. First, let me just say I love your videos and the real advice that you provide to your viewers. Here's my situation. I'm 25 years old and I have been with my boyfriend who was a year older for seven years now. I am a college graduate and he is in his last year in college in a different state for me. In the past, we have had many issues. The biggest being him flirting on social media with women and flat out lying to me about it. Trust has been broken many times, but we have moved past it. Well, I recently went on my boyfriend's Twitter page under my own Twitter account just to see what was going on. To my surprise, I found him tweeting women who attended his school, offering them massages, wanting to see how nasty they can be, and telling them how he loves seeing their asses. I just don't know what to do. I confronted him about it in a not-so-nice manner because I am truly fed up. He claimed he behaved this way because we had been arguing. But that's no excuse. As I said, we moved past those past issues and rebuilt trust. But now I feel as though I don't know who the hell he is. How do I know he hasn't been doing these things in person with them? We have been speaking on marriage and I truly do love him. But this was enough to make me leave him. How can I marry him now when he shows no respect for me either on social media? I may not have been mature enough in the past to leave him, but now I am just that fed up. It's stressing me out. Do I give him one final chance or leave that man that I am in love with? Please help. So basically, Liz and her boyfriend have been together for two, for seven years. They both are in school at college. She has graduated college, um, and he's in his last year, but they're in total different states. So she has went on her boyfriend's Twitter page and seen that he's been talking to bitches, talking about he want to give them massages, he want to see how nasty they are, he like looking at their asses. He trying to tell her he only did this because they had an argument. However, the trust is broken, and she's fed up, and she want to know what to do. First of all, Liz, your boyfriend is a fucking pervert, all right? I'm going to tell you this much. If you think that he's just doing it on social media, then you're dead ass fucking wrong. This nigga is flirting all around campus and off fucking campus. And I'm pretty sure he's sliding up in some fucking pussy and ass or whatever the, what the hell you want to call it. He ain't waiting on you. Y'all is in two different states, first of all. Two different states. And he on social media being a freak off. And on top of that, he knows that you know his Twitter account, his social media, but he's still being a freak off. Talking to females disrespectfully. He can't even respect you enough because he's doing it blatantly in public view. Because that on social media is for the public. People see that shit. And now what I'm thinking is he's a fucking nasty pervert. If a man can go on social media and get off to shit like this and start offering massages. That means that he's a freak off. A jump off. A freak off. Not even a jump off. A freak off. He is a fucking freak off. For real. Who the hell... Messages people on Twitter or any social media and it's like, oh, you want a massage, you want a massage. 
You are so fucking perverted and not even perverted, but thirsty. Nigga, get yourself something to drink. You so fucking thirsty like that, that you offering random bitches that attend your school massages and how you want to see them get nasty and you love seeing their asses. So you are just a behind the social media wall freak off thirsty motherfucker, okay? Marry him? Let me tell you something. You marry him if you want to, you're going to regret it later. You'll be at the freaking divorce court talking about, can I file these papers on his ass? Because he's a fucking freak off, perverted, nasty motherfucker, all right? And I'm sorry, but don't allow him to flip the script on you and say how he's only been talking like that and misbehaving because y'all been in an argument together. Are y'all arguing? If he's not mature enough to fucking settle and argue with, with you the mature adult way, then... You don't need to be bothered with him because you're 25 years old. So you're not a kid. You guys are not in high school. You both are grown adults. And for him to do this, I'm pretty sure that he's probably at the strip clubs. Because this is how I'm visualizing him. Because if you're writing shit like this on social media, then I'm visualizing him as some nasty, thirsty nigga who just looks at females' asses and tits all day and be thirsting, talks to any bitch, or not even any bitch, but a bitch that got something about her that's appealing to him and feels like he, she will give him the time of day. He's just thirsty like that. He probably out at the clubs getting thirsty, groping on women, trying to get numbers, while you in your other state thinking that everything is popcorn, Poppy pop popcorn while this nigga sliding out with the next bitch, leaving messages, wanting to rub up on females and massage them. I guarantee you this much, Liz. If one of them bitches would have said, yeah, I want a massage, your boyfriend would have kindly went over there, oil and oil and towel and hand and probably some condoms with his dirty little dusty ass and probably massaged her right into the bed and then freaked off with her. So, um, please, you're fed up. I'm fed up just from reading this shit. Because, true indeed, we love dudes, we love them, we find them attractive, we love them. However, there is like a thin line between hate. I'm not about to let you disrespect me on social media. I don't even give a fuck if you never see the bitch. You're still not going to disrespect me on social media. You ain't about to write no bitches talking about, oh, I want to massage you, I want to see your ass, I like what your ass look like. If he like them bitches' asses, girl... Guarantee you he liking a whole lot of bitches asses that ain't even on social media, but at the club shaking it up at the school I guarantee you your boyfriend's probably already got a girlfriend anyway or some bitches on the side that he fucks I'm just saying this because of his characteristics. He's thirsty and First of all, honey, give him a cup of cold water and a fucking washcloth to go cool himself down with and leave him the fuck alone because he's really not worth it and if you fed up with that it ain't never going to get better because here's the thing. He's going to apologize to you and he's going to try to flip the script and tell you, oh, it's because we were arguing. Oh, I wouldn't do that to you. I only do that on social media. Please don't believe the hype. Do not believe that bullshit. He only do that shit on social media. So you mean to tell me when you're not on the computer or on your phone or social media, you are a gentleman. May I open the door for you? Let me pull out your seat. Good day, madam. How are you today? And then when he get on his phone, oh, let me see you shake that ass, girl. Ooh, shake that ass, girl. Ooh, look at her ass. Yeah, let me massage you up, girl. He like a Dr. Jekyll, Mr. High type nigga? I doubt it. I doubt it. I don't think that in public views, he's a perfect person, gentleman-like. And then when he get on his gadgets, he's a freak off. No. Your boyfriend is like that 24-7. You're not around him. You really don't know. However, you're catching him in bullshit on Twitter and shit like that. And then he combats you with, oh, because I misbehaved like that because we were arguing. Guarantee you go through his Twitter shit and guarantee you're going to find some days and weeks that y'all wasn't fucking arguing. But he was telling a bitch how he want to fuck her and rub up on her. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Here's my advice. Leave him the fuck alone, because why let a nigga stress you out? I'm sorry, but I'm not about to let nobody stress me out. Man, female, dog, cat, it don't even matter. If you want to do some dumb fuck shit, like the disrespect me while on social media and telling other bitches how you want to rub on them and massage them, then you go right ahead. Have fun with it. Have at it. Enjoy your fucking self. But you're not going to be enjoying yourself on my account, not on my occurrence. I'm going to leave your fucking freak off ass the fuck alone and let you continue to fucking Twitter, tweet, 
IG, Facebook, whoever, okay? MySpace, whatever. LinkedIn, you can do all of it. Pinterest, let the bitches all know how nice their asses are. But he can tell you, he can kiss your ass goodbye. That's what I would tell him. You can rub up on them and tell them all day how nice their asses are. But at the end of the day, I'm going to tell you this. Kiss my motherfucking ass because I'm not going to deal with your shit no more. So you go ahead and freak off to whoever. Get yourself a freak off account and go offer massages, free massages. What motherfucker you know want to massage females nowadays with nothing behind it? Oh, no, I just want to massage you. I don't really want to do anything with you. I just want to rub up on you, okay? I want to make you feel good. Please, like I said, if he would have gotten the opportunity to massage any one of them bitches... He would have gladly went over there with baby oil and all and rubbed them down and then got himself a rub down. I'm just saying. So leave him the fuck alone, Liz. It's just, it's all obvious. I mean, it's really obvious to you that he's not worth your time and effort. It's nice that he's in college, but even those that are in college are sometimes not even worth the fucking headache. You know, it's like a big front. Be a gentleman. What the fuck is wrong with men? They seem to be so disrespectful to women sometimes. And they think that shit is cool. And some women think that shit is cool to be like, oh, yeah, he was looking at my ass, girl. Nigga, I wish you fucking would. I'll cut your goddamn eyes out your face. All right? Mm -hmm. You ain't gonna be disrespecting me on social media. I don't like shit like that. You know, I get people or men, whoever, on my social media. What's up with you? What's up, girl? Let me get your number. Nigga, get the fuck out of here. All right? Don't be coming on my social media trying to ruin my day with your dumbass comments. Please. Go ahead somewhere. Ain't nobody hard up or thirsty for no relationship. You don't need no IG relationship over here. No Twitter relationship. Okay? Social media will fuck up your relationship. It surely will. However, it's the person behind it that's fucking it up, too. So, Liz, my best advice to you, let him go ahead and massage whoever the hell he wants, girl. Get away from him. He's a pervert. Like, seriously? Thirsty ass. Thirsty. Mm. I wouldn't even give him a time of day. You know, you forgave him enough. One more chance, and, you know, you forgave him enough. And I'm pretty sure it was more than three strikes. Three strikes, you're out. And it all depends on the first and second strike. I'm not going to continue to allow anybody to disrespect me. And as long as you keep taking it back and forgiving him, he's just going to get worse. Then he's going to marry you. Then you guys are going to get married. And then he's going to be just blatantly, blatantly in your face disrespecting you, gawking and looking at women. And that's the one thing I hate. Don't ever let me catch you when we out in public and you staring at a bitch or looking at her ass or anything like that. Because I will embarrass you right on the spot. I have no problem with it because you ain't about to fucking play me and disrespect me in public and think that I'm not about to disrespect you. Doesn't work like that. So think about it because is he really worth it? I think not. Mm -mm. So let Liz know, ladies, what you think about her perverted, thirsty ass freak off boyfriend of seven years. What the hell? All right. This is a long one, so we are going to... I'm going to read through this, and y'all listen closely because I'm not going to repeat myself. Okay. Whew. Hey, April, how are you? Hope all is well. Okay, I'm going to try to make this short, but once again, I need you because I have been following you for so long. It came to the point where I believe I know what you would say and how you would react in many situations. I have also realized that you and I have been through many of the same situations and have had similar outcomes. Yet ever so often a situation arises where I just need, where I just have no answers and I am like, I need to talk to you because I don't even know how you may react in this either. Of course, I always pray first and put all my trust in God for any situation, good or bad. But we all need to talk to that one human person we actually listen to. And for me, that is you. So I got married to my second husband in 2002. He was nine years younger than me. He was 18 and I was 27. And I already had two daughters who were seven and two years old. I am not sure why I got married except for the fact that we began to live together. And I was just raised to believe that that was wrong. He had nowhere to go. He was just a little handsome thug from Newark who sold drugs and played PlayStation. And all we did was take e-pills and sex each other like crazy. Okay, so imagine the marriage was horrible. He cheated all the time. He attempted to act as a father, but he was a child himself. He attempted to live as I, ra as I was raised by the Bible and in church. 
and he just wound up faking, shouting, testifying, yes, testifying lies, and sleeping with many of the young women in the church, including my adopted sister and sister-in-law. I dropped him off many times back in Newark, and I just and left just to find him back home when I got there or soon thereafter. Me, I was too busy getting my bachelor's degrees and then my master's degrees and raising my kids. Not sure why or how I stayed married to him for 10 years, but I stopped really caring about him. I made him work two jobs and I handled all accounts and just gave him money to go out. He really thought half of his dirt was hidden, but I just stopped arguing. So you can imagine years, ironically, my daughter and myself were happy. I did me and got two degrees, saved my own salary, took his money, and that was that. February 2012, I found text messages on my daughter's phone from him. She was 17 at that time, and long story short, I announced that I would find out what they meant ASAP and act accordingly. There is much in between, but these are the facts. I went to my God, my father, and I explained to him that he may have to come down and actually explain to me what these text messages meant because no one's talking. I don't understand because I always told my daughters to always tell me if someone did anything to them that felt wrong and no matter who it was, I would believe them and I would handle it. Yeah, he actually scared my daughter, plus she had a learning disability. <clears throat> yeah, he, yet he actually scarred my daughter, plus she had a learning disability. The text is read, don't forget to do what you promised. So after I prayed, I got a phone call, and that was my answer. I was at work at the time. I called my boss and told her I needed a relief ASAP. I notified my pastor for prayer. I called some men, including my daughter's father, and my plan went into action. He did not know I knew anything, so he thought I was at work, meaning her husband. I was going to let these men in the back door beat my husband to death, roll him up in the carpet, and drop his butt off on the Verrazano Bridge. No one could ever tell me that my plan would fail. My pastor advised me to go to church. I could not. I met the men at my home, but he was walking out the back door and spotted me. He jumped in his car. My husband jumped in his car and followed me down the street. I drove into an alley, still plotting. My dudes were behind me. He jumped out the car as we pulled over the park. I took his keys and wallet first so he could not get far, and he was not taking that car. I said, you molested my daughter. He was cocky at first, like whatever. Then her father ran around the corner and first swing he missed, so I helped him by busting him upside the head with a bat. Anyway, the fight pursued. I was still trying to kill him and stuff him in my truck. But our little town, everyone was outside and calling the police. Until when I screamed, this dude molested my daughter. All phones went into their pockets, back into the pockets immediately. He got away half dead and butt naked, and I went to press charges. He somehow got, he somehow got to Newark and is now a fugitive of, two, of 2015. Two, we had two sons together. They're now five and six, and I want them to see their father. It hurts to see my sons look up and ask for their father. I always have my father, so I don't know how it feels. My daughter was like, Ma, they need their dad regardless. He is on the run, but through a family member, I know he wants a relationship with his sons. I'm like, well, tell him to turn himself in and pay his dues, and he can legally see his sons and attempt a life as a father. He asks for help, like, may I assist with a plea? I would do that for my sons, but I am not sure if there's anything I can do. In the meantime, they want to see him, and he wants to see them. I was going to allow that interaction through my cousin, and I was advised that I would go to jail. What should I do? Love you always. So we're going to call this young lady Kimmy. Um, so basically, she has been married to someone who is nine years younger than her for ten years. Come to find out, he molested her daughter who has a learning disability. And here's the thing. She tried to get him beat the fuck down. Like, beat down to the core. Not even beat down, but fucking murdered. So... She was going to stuff him in a trunk and throw his ass off the fucking bridge because he molested his, her daughter. And now she has, she does have two sons with him, but the ages of five and six. So make the short. And he wants to see his sons, but he's on the run. And she wants him to see his sons. And what should she do? Uh, Kimmy, what the fuck is wrong with you, bitch? Crazy. 
Don't let that nigga nowhere near your fucking kids. He molested your daughter. What makes you really think that he wouldn't do anything to your kids? Like, logical thinking, hello. It does not matter if that was not his blood daughter. It's still a child. He is a nasty, pedophile, perverted son of a bitch. Okay? Scum of the earth. And you're worried about him seeing his kids? I could care less if he didn't see anything. He can see. He wouldn't even be able to see tomorrow if it was me. However, I'm not even going to say that on camera. But here's the thing. I'm not really sure why you would go to jail because what? Y'all beat him and put him. He deserved that. Me personally, he deserved an ass whooping. If you're molesting kids and being a pedophile, then you deserve an ass whooping. That's just my take. You personally deserve to be fucking molested by the same sex. And see how you like it. Okay? Because that is one of the worst crimes in the world. I wouldn't care. I, I find that pedophiling, child molestation is the number one worst crime in the world. To me, it is. I'm not really sure about anybody else, but to me, it is. And I really feel like those people that do things like that to children really, really need to suffer. Sorry, but he needs to suffer. I wouldn't give a shit if he had a million dollars and was like, listen, I'm going to give you this to see my kids. Hell fucking no. What, what's wrong with you? Asking me what should you do. The answer is hell to the fucking no. I wouldn't care. That's not my problem. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's nice. Everybody deserves a father. Everybody deserves a mother. But sometimes we all don't have that in life. So, oh well, we are raised by the best parent that we can. My mother was a single mother. Um, since I was four and she raised me and she's a wonderful mother. We do get into it, but she's a wonderful mother. Now, if it was just my dad, he was, he's a wonderful father too, but I'm not about to raise my kids and let my kids see any freaking nasty perverted man who I'm married to still that molested my child. You know what I mean? You're good by even staying in touch with him or conversing with him or in any type of interaction with him through any type of family members. You're good. Because that with me, there wouldn't be no interaction. I wouldn't give a fuck where you were at, how you're doing, if you're dead or alive. I probably really would want you dead versus alive. But there's no way on God's green earth are you about to see any fucking child. The only thing you're going to see is the dirt being thrown over you when you're six feet under. Because being buried alive is the worst fucking thing ever. And that's torture. Just like you did torturing the child, that's torture. So fuck him. I could care less. Let him go through the rest of his life without seeing his child. I really hope he does get caught. You know what I mean? He want to be on the run. Being a real woman and being a mother, if you know where he's at, if you know his whereabouts, bitch, fucking call his ass in. I'm not saying be a snitch. Because there's no snitching. However, this is not one of those scenarios when you snitching. He molested your child. And how do you know that he's not out on the run doing that to other people's children? He could be with some other female now that has a child even younger than your daughter. And he's molesting them. Don't think that it was an isolated incident where he just did it to your daughter. Because he's probably already been like that, okay? And he's probably done that to your daughter or to somebody else's daughter that you just don't know about. And whatever he's doing now, I'm pretty sure he's on the run. He's probably shacking up with some female because he's on the run. So he probably can't have anything in his name. And God forbid he's shacking up with some female who has a child. You know what I mean? And she is not aware of his actions. You know what I'm saying? So he's not a father, he can never be a father to your kids because he's a pedophile. And that type of person I would never trust around any one of my kids, not even a dog, okay? You wouldn't even be in my presence. If I were to find out that you were a child molester, there's no way you're going to get any time from me at all, okay? You better hope I don't blow the whistle and call the police and get you escorted away from me because that is, to me, the worst, most disgusting crime ever. He want to see his sons. You allowing him to see his sons. You even giving him the inch like you have done already by interacting him 
interacting with him through family members is too fucking much. There should be no communication whatsoever with this man anymore. You should cut off all ties, have no communication, unless you know where he's at, and send Popo on his ass. Because God forbid, like I said, he's with somebody else who has kids. You really don't know. And you want to send your kids with a family member to go see this man? How the fuck do you know if he's not going to take your kids and run off and kidnap them? You really don't know. Because you really don't know this man like that. You don't know what he's capable of doing. Because had you known that then none of this would have been happening from the jump and I'm not blaming you but what I am doing now is blaming you because you're having interactions with him leave his ass where the fuck he's at and thank God you guys didn't kill him and stuff him in the car and throw him off the bridge you know why because you don't need to suffer because of this pond scum okay you don't need to suffer you have kids to raise don't lose your kids over this pond scum Shit happens, and God always handles those, okay, who get out of line and out of pocket. So don't put yourself and your life and your children's life in jeopardy over some pond scum. So it was a blessing that your neighbors came out and seen this, and he was, away, he was able to get away. Because karma is a motherfucker, and karma will bite you in the ass when you least fucking expect it. So let him roam free because you know what's going to happen? He's going to meet his match one day and he's going to get into some shit where he's really going to feel it. And God forbid he go to jail and get fucking raped. And that would be, you know what, karma biting him or fucking him in his ass. So on that note, let Kimmy know what you think about this situation. Her husband, who should be her ex-husband, molested her daughter and she has two other kids with him. He is on the run and she want to know should he let him. Should she let him see his sons? Fuck that nigga. Let him rot in hell. Put his ass behind bars and see how he likes to be fucking molested. By somebody that's bigger and brawlier and older than him. Let's see how he like that. I don't know what's wrong with the world today, but a lot of people in this world do not belong. Okay? And that's all I'm going to say. They really don't belong. We got all type of perverts on the internet at home, you know what I mean, like, what the fuck is going on with the world today, certain people like him, to me, need to suffer, they really do, and I'm pretty sure that's not godly to say, however, I have kids, and even if I didn't have kids, I would still feel like, you know what, these type of people need to suffer, it just disgusts me, it really does disgust me to think that you would do such a thing like that, and then you want your next children to be around him, never happen. Nada. So on that note, stay diva and devolicious. All the information will be provided for you guys below. Leave your opinions and statements. And as always, make sure you rate, comment, subscribe. And I'll see you girls in my next video.